Hey, what's up guys? It's Delantix. This week I've updated my portal info sheet, which is a slideshow that details all 30 portals in set 9. Set 9.5 added two new regions and nine new portals or reworks. So today I'm going to explain them in depth to you as well as the two new rise abilities. As always, the link to the sheet is in the description below. And without further ado, let's go. First off, we got Cardinal Arcology. So Cardinal Archaeology is the first portal added in the Ishtal region, which is a new region. And as you know, each of the regions have a new rise. So Cardinal Archaeology in this galaxy or portal, as some people might call it, the augments this game will always be silver, gold, and then prismatic in that exact order for everybody. So some tips for this is that if your strategy relies on your legend augments and your silver legend augment is not very good, then you want to avoid this portal. Uh, for instance, stuff like Lee Sin Reroll, silver ticket is not very good. Or bronze ticket, I believe it's called. The tier one is not very good. Pumping up Yi, uh, Asol, Asol's uh, cutting corners, AFK for Tom Kench, Pengu's Tiny Titans at 2-1 uh, are all not too great compared to their gold and prismatic counterparts. Whereas something like Buried Treasures for Ezreal is very good at silver. Um, Pandora's Items at TF is actually honestly more preferable than the gold version because you get to shift around that one component, which is much more flexible than that full item. Um, Spoils of War and Latent Forge are also pretty good on the silver. And here we just have the best 2-1 silver augments um, sorted on Taxa Tools for patch 13.19 if you're interested in that. Cool, let's go back to the starts. Next we got Finn's Markets. So this is the first portal for Bilgewater. And in Finn's Markets, twice per game, Finn will randomly appear to each player uh, at the same time and then offer either a completed artifact, support, or radiant anvil. And then anvils, of course, allow you to pick one of the four choices that are presented to you. So again, Finn will always come at a random stage and a random round and then he'll come to everyone's board at the same time so don't worry about that so the round that finn appears is completely random it could be early stage two even on stage one two one you open your augment and he's right there popping out or late stage five late stage six even i've had it happen way up till he hasn't popped up until stage five five and um stage five six so yeah it happens um, the type of item that Finn offers is not influenced by the items that were offered before, as far as I know. There could be a correction to this, so let me know if I'm wrong. And then a tip is, due to how random the stage Finn appears is, you know, it could be stage 2, stage 3, stage 5. It's usually not worth it to wait to slam items for Finn. Um, even like, you might have regrets if he pops up in stage 5 with a raiding item and then you can't put them under your carry, but like, it's not worth it to stall for three, four stages without having, you know, a third item slot on your carry just for the chance that it could be a Radiance. You know, it could be a support item and then you're screwed because you lost HP for having an empty item slot for three stages. You know, if you're a remover, that's a different story. And yeah, for support items, which are all new, we're all not used to them yet. So when in doubt, tactics that pulls it out, search up the supports, you can filter on the other slide to support and in general most support items are pretty good and splashable and flexible for each comp obviously like chalice of power is ap zeke's is attack speed and i'll talk about this more in the valor's hollow which is also a new portal all right hall of the nine so this is actually added in set 9.0 but it is very new and it's new to the sheet so I'm going to go over it. At the start of each stage, everyone gets the same loot orb from a highly varied pool. And then in the void, in all the void regions, uh, Rise chooses a random portal from all the other 12 other regions that Rise can have an ability from. It used to be 10. Let's take a look at the loot table right here. So as you can see, pretty even splits for 14%, 13%, and then 3% is the Tactician's Crown and the Boot. Uh, what's important to know is that the spatula and the tome of traits are pretty game altering ones. Um, gold is going to be five times the stage, so stage two is 10 gold, stage five is going to be 25. And then this two star unit one is going to be a tier of, is going to equal to the stage minus one. So stage six and on will give a five star, we'll give a five dollar, five cost, two star. Yes, indeed. 
So yeah, lots of variants from that. Um, I just clicked on it and it pops out the source, which is the tactics.tools table. All right, so based on the loot offered, tempo in Hall of Nine lobbies is gonna be very high. And end boards are often much stronger due to an influx of a large amount of gold or more Orn items or tomes and spatulas, which cap out pretty high. I know if you're playing on 13.19b, Vanquishers and Ionias are running everywhere. Check my video on that if you haven't. Consider taking spatula off a of carousel more often than you would because it's kind of likely that another will drop. It's a 40% chance. I know when I play this galaxy or portal, I take spatulas pretty often because one, spatulas are just really good right now in the meta with Ionia and Noxus and Vanquisher especially. But two, there's a 40% chance that a spatula will drop in stage two, and then another 14%, three, four, five, you name it, as well as getting one on neutrals or Krugs. So there's always a chance for that. Consider avoiding comps that don't benefit from a spatula or tome drop. Once again, 40% chance every stage, and then spatula and tome, if you can include them both, it's 28%. Um, something like this would be like that TF comp that's been rising up in popularity. They don't have a use at all for the spatula. And then Tomo Traits is only like, um, Tomo Traits is only really good for uh, strategists in that comp. And that is, you know, one of a multitude of options that Tome could drop you. So just be on the lookout for that. Since the loot is so varied, don't rely specifically on any of the loot drops. Again, with the item thing, don't leave a slot open thinking you might get an Orn item. You're probably not going to. Uh, anything you wish for in this portal, you won't get, probably. So. Just keep that in mind. Uh, the boot drops absolutely nothing. It gives you even like a little plus zero pops up, which is pretty funny. All right, now on to Immortal Bastion. So Immortal Bastion was reworked in set 9.5 and I think the last patch or the last few patches of 9.0. But basically what it does now is that similar to Tiny Titans, all players start with 115 player health instead of 100. So this bonus health does work intuitively with transfusion. If you're missing 60 health, you are going to get the value from missing 60 health. Even though you're not 40 HP, you are 40 plus 15, which is 55 HP. 15 bonus health is equivalent to seven more units left alive when taking player damage because player damage is calculated from a base number plus each unit that survived, which is two HP. There are obviously some um, exceptions to this, like on stage two, if you get hit by cool pack, you're not going to get hit for, you know, 14 damage per player. Um, it scales with the stage. And if y'all are interested, I'll have a video explaining player HP in TFT coming in two to three business weeks. <laughs> Note that more players are likely to play for a lose streak due to having higher HP. Um, moreover, Piltover is really risky in this gala in this portal because players are a lot are going to be a lot more likely to full open, which means they're going to sell their entire board. And then since you have to play Piltover, then you're going to have two to three units on your board. And that means you're going to win because they have no units on their board. So you're going to, going to instantly win and then cash out, which is pretty bad news bears for you if you're going for that 12 fight loss streak on Piltover. Expect much stronger end boards and longer gains due, games due to that higher player HP, since people have more stages and more rounds to scale up. They're more likely to play for a lose streak. They're more likely to play greedy with their econ. That means they're gonna be richer in the end and then produce higher cost boards. All right, right after that is Ishauke. So this is an Ishtal portal. And each time players collectively start up 20 units, all players are gonna gain increasingly valuable loot. So here's the loot table for that. They have option A or option B, and everyone in the lobby will get the same option. This is just like a 50% chance of which one everyone's gonna get. So don't worry about you know getting scammed. If you really want a component, but everyone but you got a, a gold, but everyone else got a component, you know. So don't worry about that. As you can see here, components or eight gold, and then the second tier is gonna be 12 gold or two random components. The third tier is going to be six uh, at 60 stars is going to be a completed item anvil. And then it's going to be a support or radiance and then another radiance or support. Tactician's crown. And I haven't really seen any games go above 100. Honestly, most of them end at or before 80. 
but if you go all the way to 120, you get a Texan's Crown. 140 is gonna be that Radiant upper, radiant Conversion upgrade for one item, like in Hearth Home. 160 is gonna be 50 gold. And then 180 is gonna be three champion duplicators. And finally at 200, it's Ace. We're gonna straight off that loot table. So the drop at 60 is guaranteed to be a completed item anvil. You can consider this when filling out your item slots for let's say a secondary tank or a secondary carry. Three starting a unit counts as one stack. So it's not gonna count as three stacks, although it is technically starring up three two star units. It just counts as one. You can scout for low cost reroll comps to estimate when loot will drop. So lobbies with a lot of one cost rerollers like Samira, Kale, Chogath, they'll hit those benchmarks a lot faster because they have a lot of people starring up units, especially with something like Honor Roll or Pandora's Bench. There will be a lot of stars, uh, unit stars passing around. The game will choose option A or option B for each tier, and then all players will get the same exact loot. I got some confirmation on this after looking through some, through some VODs. But basically, as you can see, like in the loot table, like it's not going to have one person get a support item and the other seven are going to get a radiant item. That would be ridiculous. So <laughs> nothing to complain about there. All right, let's move on to Rat Town. Starting at stage two, lucky shops appear randomly once per stage. These feature units tailored to your army's active traits. If you remember Loaded Dice, it's similar to that. Lucky Shop Tailing uh, prioritizes active traits with the highest active being first, then the lower active, and then finally the non-active. So if you're playing BD or you have no active traits, like it's in the early game, it'll prioritize duplicates of the units that you have and then units that share the trait of the unit that you have on your board. The lucky shops can appear at any point within the stage, including right before neutrals and at the right, right at the start of the stage. So one thing you can do is that if it's pretty late in the stage, like 2-5 or 2-6 to the last combats, with the last combat and the shop hasn't appeared yet, you know, if it's the last combat, then you know the shop's going to appear on the neutral round right before it starts. So consider leveling for better odds if you're playing for like a 4 cost carry and you're level 6, you can level to level 7 for better odds. If you're playing for a three cost, you could go from five to six, um, just to get those higher odds for that lucky shop. And then it's pretty likely to find uncontested units in these lucky shops, whether regardless of the cost, especially the higher up you go, because those pools are thinner. Next DD. Alrighty, Serpentine River. So the this one's fun. The stage two and four carousels are replaced by voting rounds. Everyone gets a component anvil as well as the winning reward that won that player vote. So it's a vote that runs just like the vote at the start of the game for the three portals. There are three choices that are presented. So there is a loot table attached to this and is actually for the mystery box that is shown in that picture there. We voted for it. So the possible options um, total for the Serpentine River in general are 8 health, 8 gold, 5 permanent rerolls, spatula, a component anvil, a tome of traits, or a mystery box. And these are those options that will be presented. Um, the game will pick 3 options for stage 2 and then 3 for stage 4. I think again, I think it's just completely random on what it rolls. So here's the loot table for that mystery box. As you can see, uh, most of it is gold related or item related. 20% chance for three, three costs and a lesser dupe. Uh, two components has a 20% chance. Uh, what's notable is that there is a 5% chance for a Tome of Traits and a 5% chance of a spatula, which is pretty game altering, especially if you're playing a comp that doesn't benefit from the spatula or Tome of Traits so much. So just be on the lookout for that. And then finally, 1% chance for everyone to get a Tactician's Crown, which is always fun. So remember that you always get a component anvil with each reward. I forget sometimes. So that allows you to choose from one of the four components. Scout the players that vote quickly to see if one options will give them a large advantage. And if so, you can vote against them. Just be mindful of where everyone's vote is going. For example, like if someone's a Piltover player and they the hp plus eight is offered and they instantly go to vote for it right because obviously if you're on a piltover lose streak you want to lose as many games uh, as many rounds as possible and then 
have a few lives extra once you cash out. So that plus eight HP could mean them getting stacks for another whole round, which is really, really good for them. So if you see someone, you know, dash to a certain option, look at look at their board and see how much they benefit from it. And if it's too much, then vote against it. If it doesn't help you, vote against it as well. Now, this is pretty apparent as well with like Ionia getting a spatula or a Tomo Traits. Finally, the mystery box, as I said before, 5% chance for spat, 5% chance for tome. So if you're not playing a comp that benefits from those, I would suggest definitely voting against it because some comps in the meta, especially right now, I knew Vanquishers, Noxus, very, very much benefit from that tome or, or spatula. All right, next up on the list, Slaughter Docks. In Slaughter Docks, everyone's going to gain free shop rerolls equal to the stage number plus one at the start of each stage. And these free rerolls are going to expire at the end of the round. So they expire, not like uh, the shopping spree ones or the Serpentine River, five free rerolls. Um, they do expire just like the trade sectors and the ticket rerolls expire at the end of the turn. So make sure you use those and don't forget them. Don't go AFK during these rounds. Most players commit to a reroll comp at 2-1 if they do end up playing a reroll. So scout around to see what everyone's playing and get an idea because you get those, you know, X amount of free rolls, I think three free rolls at the start of the game. That can kind of dictate if you get a bunch of a certain one cost, right? That can dictate where you're leading towards for the rest of the game. So just scout around and see what everyone else is playing and see what you've hit and evaluate from there. If you're rerolling a higher cost unit, consider leveling early for better shop odds. So if it's like stage three one, stage four one, or even stage two one, and you're looking for two costs, level up and then use your rolls so that you get the higher chance for the higher cost units. Finally, if you're playing an uncontested units, consider waiting for people to reroll first to thin the pool of X cost units. Um, this is especially applicable. Honestly, it's applicable for every cost, but it's especially applicable in the one cost reroll meta, as you can see in this screenshot here, right? We got Graves, we got Jin, we got Samira, Cassio, Kale, and even TF. So it's when people roll and buy units, it takes it out of the total unit pool, right? If there are an X amount of one costs, uh, X amount of copies of a single one cost, and then there you multiply that with every one cost, and then that's the pool generated for that percentage chance that you have to roll that one cost in your shop, right? So if a bunch of people are buying, you know, if someone buys out eight graves, that's eight less graves that you'd have to sift through when you're finding when you're looking for a Samira. So if you're the only one playing Samira, you can wait for everyone else to use their rolls on two one three one especially when a lot of people are going to be rolling down on 3-1 to finish their 3-star Cho'Gath, their 3-star Graves. So you can wait for them to finish, and then all of those one cost that you don't want will be out of the pool, which makes it easy pickings for, it to use to, for you to use your free rolls and hit that Samira 3. Obviously, if you're contested, then you probably want to do the opposite of that and roll faster than your opponent does. So just keep that in mind. All right, last but not least, Valor's Hollow. So Valor's Hollow is a one of the new portals on the Freelord region and is the newest, the only new one in set number five. On stage two three, gain a component item anvil. On three three, gain a support item anvil instead. So anvils again allow you to pick one item from four choices. Support items are new to 9.5 and they're generally splashable and flexible through different comps. Some items will have units that are better at holding them. For example, Ash is a really great holder of Obsidian Cleaver because her ability hits the entire board or almost the entire board every time she casts. casts. And then as always, use Tactics of Tools and Explorer to sort support items by average place. If you have access to the Advanced Explorer through Patreon, you can deselect split by item holder. And this makes it so like it won't check for like, is your Zaya holding the Obsidian Cleaver? Is your Zaya holding the Zeke's Herald? It'll just say, is this a part of their comp? If so, how good does it do relative to the other support items? Um, but usually you can just go, you know, Tactics of Tools, the other tab, look up support, and then you'll see, you know, you can rate sort by place. And if it seems fair enough to fit in your comp, uh, go for it. You know, Zephyr, Shroud, very, very, the most extremely splashable ones. Cleaver is good if you have an applier, you know. Uh, Aegis of the Legion, Locket, usually good. And then Zeke's and um, Cone, Q-Cone, Ice Cream Cone chalice are going to be a little more specific. 
Alright, running through our new Rise abilities, so there are two new regions, Bilgewater and Ishtal. And the Bilgewater Rise is going to summon a giant treasure chest, which looks pretty funny, on the largest cluster of enemies that deals X amount of damage. And then the size of this chest is actually increased by 1% for every two gold you have. So it has a gold scaling similar to that Zon Rise, which can make for some biggie, pretty big shenanigans. Each enemy hit also has a chance to knock gold or treasures out of a chest and that chance for dropping gold doubles if the chest kills the enemy. So that loot that drops can contain gold or components similar to the chests that are dropped by Shrima. And then the Ishtal Rise creates a portal to Ishtal. It basically makes Zyra Ultimate from League, but it covers the ground around an area in a circle in Vines. And then after a little bit of delay, just like the Zyra Ult, it snaps up and then deals damage and stuns enemies within as well as wrapping their allies with armor and MR resistance, 100 for base for 4 seconds. But yeah, those are the 9 portals I wanted to cover for 9.5, all the new ones added and or reworked in the past. I've updated pretty much every slide in the presentation, so if you missed it or if you want to look at it again, feel free to. The link is going to be down in the description uh, below as always. But yeah, thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed, and climb on!